Hi, my name is Josh Hudy. I'm the Elementary Mathematics Curriculum Manager for the Houston Independent School District. In this video, we'll be talking about equivalent fractions, and more specifically, how to represent equivalent fractions using colored rods. I'm going to set this scenario in a problem story context, so let me go ahead and start by reading the problem. Two students each received identical candy bars. Rachel gave her sister two-thirds of her candy bar. John gave his brother a part of his candy bar equal to what Rachel's sister received, but named differently. How can you represent this problem using colored rods? This is a pretty heavy question. We know that two students received identical candy bars. That's important because that tells us right away the candy bars they received were the same size. This means that we're, we are dealing with same size holes. It's not like one of the kids got a king size bar and the other one got a fun size pack. But we're talking about the same hole. So you wanna make sure to establish with students that we're talking about the same size hole. It says that Rachel gave her sister two thirds of her candy bar. John gave his brother a fractional amount that was equal to what Rachel's sister received, but named differently. Notice how I said it was equal, but named differently. This tells me that I'm going to be finding two different fractions that are actually equal in value, but look different when we, if we were to write what the fractional amount was. So I need to explore with my colored rods how to represent two thirds in two different ways. Make certain that you allow your students plenty of time to explore with the rods. They need to understand that the white has a length of one and the orange has a length of 10. It's also important for students to understand that any two rods can be combined together to form what is called a train and a whole can be named using the combination of two rods. As students explore, they need to be thinking about specifically what piece might represent a third. So if I choose the dark green to represent one whole, I can choose the reds to represent a third. Let me show you this. Okay, so if my dark green is one whole, three reds represent three thirds, you would want to ask students how do you know what the red rod represents? Well, the red rod represents one third. How do you know? Because it repeats three times to equal the length of the whole. So this is one third, two thirds, three thirds. So I have found a fraction that works. Now, I have a little bit of an issue. I'm representing three thirds, but she only gave her sister two thirds of the bar. So I'm gonna take one of those reds away. So I can say that the dark green represents the whole candy bar, and that this red rod represents a third and a third. So Rachel's sister received two thirds candy bars, these two red pieces. We know that John gave his brother a part of his candy bar that was equal in value to what's being represented here, but it was named differently. So is there any other way that we can represent the same length? Is there another rod we can use? If I choose to pull out the white rods, I can line them up right underneath the red rods and it's equal in length. So I know that this amount could represent what John gave his brother. How would I name what these white rods are? I need to compare them to the whole. I'm gonna remove the red rods for just a minute. How many white rods would it take to equal the length of the whole. I can fill in here what's missing, and I see that six, one, two, three, four, five, six, it takes six white reds, I'm sorry, it takes six white rods to equal the length of the dark green. This means that each rod is a sixth because it repeats itself six times. But only this amount was equal to the amount that you know, Rachel gave her sister. So how can I name that fraction? Here the reds represent two thirds 
The whites are sixths, so I count. One, six, two, six, three, six, four sixths. Oh, I know that four sixths is the same as two thirds. So this means I have just found an equivalent fraction. I know that these two amounts are equivalent, they're equal in value, but they're named differently. Rachel gave her sister two thirds, John gave his brother four sixths, but we're really talking about the same amount. I'm gonna now move into a second similar, but slightly different question related to equivalent fractions. I have a different question here that I wanna read. Two students each received identical sandwiches. Demetra gave her mom two-fourths of her sandwich. Julie gave her dad a part of her sandwich equal to what Demetra's mom received, but named differently. Very similar context, but the fraction that I used is a little bit different than the fraction from the previous example. This fraction is two-fourths. And what students first need to do is represent that amount. Demetra gave her mom two-fourths of her sandwich. So I need to be looking at my colored rods and thinking about which rod or rods could represent this fourth. And I think that I'm going to use the brown to do this. I wanna say that the brown represents my sandwich. Demetra gave her uh, mom two-fourths of it. So I need to figure out, before I can figure out two-fourths, I need to figure out what a fourth is. That's usually the process students have to go through. Okay, what can I use to represent the whole? Will it show fourths? I need to show two fourths. But before I show two fourths, let me just figure out what a fourth looks like. That means I need to find a piece that repeats itself four times to equal the length of the, the brown. Students might select wrong pieces and repeat it four times and find that that doesn't work. They'll scrap that until they figure out which piece repeats. I see that the red repeats itself four times to equal the length of the brown. Demetra gave her mom two-fourths. Now, it says that Julie gave her dad a part of her own sandwich, equal in value to the two-fourths here, but named differently. So when I'm looking at this, I want to find a rod or rods that can equal the length of this two-fourths section. I know that the reds represent two-fourths, one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, but I only have two of them. What piece is equal in value to this, but named differently? Students might think instead of resulting, instead of using the whites, students might choose to use a longer piece they may say that the purple is the same length as the reds, which it is. And so this purple amount is the same value, it has the same length, but it could be named differently. So we would wanna ask, what is the value of the purple compared to the brown? Well, I see that the purple repeats itself two times to equal the length of the brown. So one purple is a half. Let's put back up the reds. Two-fourths is the same as one-half. I see that the purple is half of the brown. It's also equal in value to the reds. Students may also represent this using the whites. And we would need to count and figure out, well, what is one white compared to the brown? Well, the whites repeat themselves eight times to equal the length of the brown. So these are eighths. Why are they eighths? Because they repeat eight times to equal the length of the whole. How many do you have? Well, I need to have four eighths because that's equal to the two fourths and the one half. So I am actually now showing three different ways to name an equal value. It could have been that Julie gave her dad a half of a sandwich or four eighths of a sandwich. But these three fractions are equivalent. Two fourths, one half, four eighths. And the students can model this, set it up, they understand that these 
values are equal, but named differently.